All right, guys. So Morning Joe, to this point, has been the absolute biggest cheerleaders for Joe Biden. I don't think anybody would deny that. I mean, they apparently Biden and Joe Scarborough talk on the phone on a regular basis. Uh, it has become the conventional wisdom hub on TV. And um, it's basically just the most aggressive Biden defense network of all the shows out there. So um, after the debate, obviously, they're put in quite a position, aren't they? Because it's like they're used to defending Biden at every turn. But now they're in a position where they have to be honest and sort of say that was a really, really bad performance. And so it's like, how do they thread that needle? Well, they uh, got into a really tense back and forth. It looks like there's trouble in paradise with Mika Brzezinski and uh, Joe Scarborough. Um, they got into a really tense back and forth about this. Let's watch and we'll break it down. Unfortunately, last night, President Biden let every fastball hanging out over the plate go right by for a strike yes. for Donald Trump. So That was an indication uh, again, that he was just not up to it yeah. last night. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, hold on a second. That I, I agree with everything you said, except for the last part of it. Everybody calm down, and I'll tell you why. I mean, you, it's fine to not spin what happened last night, and we're not going to. But, Again, but by the way, he had Mika, a terrible by night. Way, Mika, everybody's calm here. No, you're the, no, you're the but, only one raising your voice. No, Everybody no, no. is calm here. Bro, bro. Joe and Mika are like the only people in the media that you could argue have a similar thing going to me and Crystal, right? Like we're both media figures and commentators and, you know, we do a show together and all those things. And if I ever said to Joe Scarborough, excuse me, if I ever said to Crystal what Joe Scarborough just said to Mika, the way he said it there, my ass would be sleeping on the couch, homie. Did you hear the way what he said and how he said that? By the way, calm down. Calm down. Everybody's calm here. The only one raising their voice is you. Oh, oh. Joe Scarborough, just, he just feels like a colossal asshole, doesn't he? All right, let's keep going. Let's just immediately pull this. Let's end this. Let's find someone else. That's, that, not, what, that's not what Mike said. That uh, attitude toward this is what I am saying slow down on. Because, again, there's no spinning it. But let's be balanced. Let's for once show some balance in, in a media world that is so shrill with imbalance that we've become ignored to the difference between these two candidates. So let's put it this way. Gene Robinson, I'll go to you. Well, wait, wait, I, I just have to stop you. First of all, we always show balance. We, we are, yeah. S secondly, nobody's panicking. Mm. I, 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 I said Wrong. these were questions that Democrats and Joe Biden needed to ask themselves. And Mike said he, he, he missed one pitch down the middle after another and wasn't up to it last night. Right. OK. He said wasn't up to it last he night. He said last night. So I, I will say that they're having a total crisis over there. They're in full panic and meltdown mode. It's not panic. I mean, it's, it's, it's not being panicked to understand what's at stake at this election and understand the window is closing very quickly. And if Joe Biden is not up to doing this, um, and if last night did not reveal that to you and other Democrats, then it needs to be revealed pretty soon. All right, so let's talk about this. Joe Scarborough is totally chicken shit with what he's saying here. He's, and by the way, you have to go watch the original. There's like a longer clip of their whole reaction to the debate. And Joe Scarborough very clearly is panicking. He's very clearly in meltdown mode. He's very clearly saying it might be the right move to replace Joe Biden. He's not up for this. It looks like he's not up for this. So don't say all those things or imply all of those things. And then when Mika comes out there and points out like, this is what you're doing, be like, no, we didn't do that. You, but you did. But you did do that. You are panicking. You are at the very least implying that Biden should step down and it should be somebody else. So if you're going to say those things, then own up to it. Now, that's where Mika is correct. But Mika is also wrong in the sense that she's implying it's wrong for people to react like that. No, that is the only logical reaction, people. That is the only logical reaction. Because here's the thing. People talk about whether or not Biden can win at this point in time. That's what people are talking about, and understandably so. But very few people are going that next step and saying, can he govern for another four years? Guys, if I'm being super kind, I'm saying maximum he's got two years left. The reality is he might not even make it to election day, right? So who are we kidding in this scenario?
By the way, this, it matters. This matters. Why? Because I'm now convinced that one of the reasons why Netanyahu is doing everything he's doing and not caring at all about a pushback from the United States of America is because Biden is fundamentally weak in the state that he's in. You can slap him around. You can push him around. He can't keep up with what you're doing. He doesn't have the ability to respond in a proper fashion. You know, what does Netanyahu see? Netanyahu sees all those same video clips we do from the 1990s and the early 2000s of Joe Biden talking about how much he's a Zionist and how much he loves Israel and all these clips about he's truly ideological in his fervor in favor of Israel. He knows that's Joe Biden. And he also knows now Joe Biden ain't home mentally. So Joe Biden doesn't have the cognitive ability to recognize and understand when Netanyahu is making a fool of, of him and humiliating him on the world stage. He doesn't, Biden does not realize when he says, don't go into Rafa, it's a red line. And then Netanyahu goes into Rafa. Joe Biden doesn't even remember. He just said that going into Rafa was a red line and he's not willing to act on it because he wants to, hey, let me just smooth it over until election day. Just try to get by and get through this. He's not willing to take a stand and say, you know what? I'm going to break up the U.S. relationship with Israel and not send them any more money and weapons, which is the correct reaction. But he doesn't have a clean break like that in him because he's old and feeble and coasting off the momentum of the previous years back when his brain did work. Now he's not home. He's not there. So it actually matters. Because normally I would say, look, as long as you have the right policies, if you're a really old, feeble man, is it really going to bother me that much if at the end of the day you're trying to get people universal health care, you're trying to wipe out medical debt, you're trying to raise wages, you're trying to end the wars? I would say, look, you got to overlook these things because at this point it's just optics. And who really cares about optics at the end of the day if the policy is correct? But here we have, it's not just optics with Biden. It's not. It's also substantive. And so Mika's wrong in saying, like, everybody calm down. No, nobody should calm down. Everybody should be more panicked. I will li- I'm will. i at the point, and I'm sure many of you agree with this. I'm at the po- I will literally take Kamala Harris over Joe Biden. Her brain works. Yeah, she says goofy things. You know, you, you didn't fall out of a coconut tree and uh, be unburdened by the past. Uh, what, what's the one she says about being unburdened? I'm blanking on it right now, but there was a video clip of her saying it like 70 different times where she's like, We need to care about the future unburdened by what has been or something like that, right? Like, yeah, she says goofy things. Yeah, she's got a weird laugh, like all those things. But her brain works. It's there. It's functioning. That's the bar now. That's where we're at now. I take fucking Hillary Clinton over Joe Biden because her brain works, even though she's wrong about virtually everything. She's basically the same as Joe Biden, except her brain works better right? Why would you not prefer that? Like, this is where we're at right now. And Mika's like, everybody calm down. Why? Why would you calm down? If there was ever a time to not be calm, it's now. If you truly believe Trump is an existential threat. And I do. So anyway, there you have it. Trouble in paradise, man. And you're seeing a lot of this, a lot of, uh, a lot of tense exchanges over the predicament that Democrats are currently in. All right, guys, that's the show. Thank you very much for listening. Y'all know I'm on vacation. I'm enjoying myself, but I had to give you guys a show real quick. Uh, Everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. That helps out massively. It costs you nothing. You can support the show on Patreon if you're so inclined. I deeply appreciate that. You guys know I don't talk to any advertisers ever, so you guys help fund this show from the ground up. Two bucks at a time, five bucks at a time. You know the drill. Uh, And that's all I got for you guys, man. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Hey, y'all. Do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.